Hi, welcome to Snap Traps uh, Carnivorous Plant Care. Uh, today is about Venus Flytrap Care, which I believe is one of the best starter carnivorous plants. You hear about them a lot. It, it's super easy to take care of if you know the right steps, and I'm just here to tell you what those steps are. I'd like to share my knowledge with you guys because I know the everything can be super intimidating for a lot of beginners. So let's get started with some of the basics for a Venus flytrap. So let's talk about the three main things that any plant needs. Uh, water, soil, and sun. Uh, for carnivorous plants in particular, you want to make sure that you're using distilled water, reverse osmosis water, rain water, uh, any of those options work. I usually tend to buy distilled water because I can get it from any Walgreens or convenience store, Walmart, whatever works for you. Uh, I just find it to be the most convenient and especially since I don't have a whole lot of plants, um, it's easier than installing a whole reverse osmosis system in my house or collecting rainwater and all that because it's a dollar per gallon and it's not that bad. This is just because tap water, water from your fridge, spring water, baby water, any of that, uh, it usually has minerals added either for flavor or there's fluoride in it and that can burn your plants roots which will eventually make them super weak and kill them uh, another thing is soil similar to the water you want to make sure there's not very many minerals in it this means no fertilizers no soil by miracle grow none of that's gonna work because it's just gonna burn your plants roots and they get all of the minerals they need from the Sun or from the bugs that they eat and all that uh, so what I usually do is I usually have a peat moss which just looks like brown soil and perlite which is gonna look like tiny white balls almost you just mix it together and that creates a really good soil mix for car carnivorous plants especially for Venus flytraps it maintains water but the perlite makes enough drainage so that it's not gonna get waterlogged with every watering I know a lot of people also try to use uh, long, fi long fibered sphagnum or LFS. This also holds water really well. A lot of people have great success with this. People also do grow their own LFS moss and this works out really well for them. Uh, I just have not gotten to that point yet. So I just use the peat moss and perlite mix. There are definitely a lot of other mixes out there that you could use. Uh, and I would recommend looking into that just to see what might work best for you. But peat moss and perlite is definitely what works best for me. For Venus flytraps, one of the most important things that they need every day is so much, so, so much, much sunlight. During their growing phase, as opposed to their dormancy phase, which I'll talk about in a little bit, they need lots of sun. And whether it be artificial or the real sun outside, they just need lots of it. Anywhere from a 12 to 16 hour, hour photo period. A photo period just means the amount of time that they're under light and that's gonna be good for them. I keep mine outside because the sun is just obviously, you know, the best we're gonna get. I also haven't invested in a good growing light or anything, but you don't need to have super fancy five foot long fluorescent poles. A simple CFL bulb, which are the little curly ones that are so cute, are gonna work just fine. Uh, the only things you want to look out for that are you just want to make sure that it's bright enough. So for that you're going to check lumens and you want to make sure that the warmth is good. So you want like a, a cool light bulb that's actually going to work the best for you. And that just has the appropriate wavelengths for a Venus flytrap. Uh, and for that the photo period is going to be the same. Uh, this is just if you want to keep yours indoors. A lot of hardware stores also sell uh, timers and so that way you don't have to wake up at 6 a.m. or whatever, turn it on and then turn it off before you go to bed. It will just do it automatically for you. And that way you can ensure that your plant is getting the right amount of light that it needs. It's very good uh, when you're, the inside of your traps turn red. That just means it's getting enough sunlight. Uh, not all plants will do this, but some will. And it just means that they're getting enough sun. Some species just don't have it in them to turn green, or sorry, to turn red. But if it does, that's a good sign. It doesn't mean that it's dying. And some Venus flytraps have actually been bred to be entirely red. Uh, they're not super common. The most common obviously is green and sometimes a little bit of red or maybe even a little bit of pink on the inside. But that just means it's getting enough sun. Uh, on the inside of the Venus flytrap, uh, you will see some little hairs. 
that's actually how it detects something living inside of it and that's how it knows how to close if a fly comes in and touches these little hairs uh, if it touches a few of them, it's going to snap shut, and then as it continues to move around inside of there, it's actually going to form a seal on the outside of the trap, and that's when the trap can really start digesting. One thing to watch out for is what you pot your Venus flytrap in. You can see here that I actually put mine in an orange ceramic pot, which isn't very good for it, just because uh, minerals can actually get stuck inside of that and then when you water the minerals leach out into the soil and it builds up and that's gonna burn my plants roots and again Venus flytraps really do not like minerals not in their water not in their soil they get everything they need from their bugs in the Sun I know some people do have success especially in the short term because I had a Venus flytrap for two years he eventually died just because I didn't know enough about dormancy and proper care but I do know a bit more now and over time it will leach minerals into your soil and some people actually because they want to use these orange pots will uh in between potting they will soak the pots to try and get the minerals out and that's okay too but I find it easier to just use a plastic cup or plastic pots you can even use a solo cup if you uh put some drainage holes in the bottom I like to cut mine in half just so that they're a little bit shorter uh, but you just put drainage holes in the bottom and then pot it as normal and that works out great for a lot of people and it's a cheap easy fix so you don't have to get out and go get specific pots and then like I said you can hand feed your Venus fly traps it's not necessary they can survive and even thrive solely on sunlight but if you're concerned about it and you want to feed it you can feed it fish food pellets uh, I use beta fish pellets I know a lot of people use uh, goldfish flakes or pellets but to do that, you just want to make sure that you put a couple pellets in a, a little bit of water. You leave it to soak for a little bit, and then you put it on a toothpick, and then you just kind of rub it across those hairs we talked about earlier uh, to make sure that it closes up. And then you just want to make sure that you rub the outside of the traps so that it forms that seal, and then it can really start digesting for you. Uh, one thing that a lot of people may struggle with, depending on what area you live in, is humidity. Uh, Venus flytraps originally can't come from bogs, and bogs are just naturally very humid areas. And I personally haven't struggled with this too much from northern USA. I know in some of those more arid areas, you might. And so for this, you can just absolutely put a plastic dome or... I know a lot of people will take milk jugs or two liter bottles, cut the bottom off, and then just put that on top. And if you like mist in there every so often or leave a standing tray of water, uh, then that will just create the humidity that you need. Or you can put it in a room with a humidifier because that will definitely help to raise the humidity for your plant. And all of that works out just fine. Another thing, like I mentioned earlier, is no fertilizer you cannot use fertilizer especially not for beginners i know some advanced carnivorous plant growers have very very thought out methods about how to apply fertilizer in just the right dosages so that it doesn't harm the plant but for beginners i would absolutely stay away from this and then the last thing i want to talk to you about is dormancy Dormancy is super important for Venus flytraps. Not every carnivorous plant needs a dormancy period, but Venus flytraps do especially, or else they're not going to last past a couple years maybe. What dormancy is, is basically the plant goes to sleep through the winter. It almost hibernates in a sense. And what you're going to see is all of the traps and the leaves that grew over the summer in the growing period are going to die back and it's going to look like your plant is dying, but with the shorter days of sunlight or the shorter photo period, uh, it's just dying back and preparing for winter and cold weather and not as much sun, no bugs or anything like that. So basically, and for dormancy, uh, you don't want to water it as often. In the summer, you want to make sure that it's always in standing water and staying moist and hydrated. Uh, not waterlogged, but damp. For dormancy, you might let it dry out between waterings or water it 
every two weeks or so. Just kind of depends on what's best for you. Uh, and this is because the plant does not uptake nearly as much water as it does in its growing period just because it's almost sleeping in a sense. Uh, and this just prepares it for the next summer. And again, if you don't let it go through its dormancy period, it's not going to survive more than two years. Uh, common belief is that it needs to be cold for it to go in dormancy. It definitely helps, but the most important thing is the shorter photo period. If you put it anywhere between, I think, four to six hours a day, uh, you should be just fine and it should go into proper dormancy. Some common methods if you live up in Northern America like I do, where it gets so cold in the winter, is you might want to put it in the fridge, uh, maybe in an unheated basement or a garage, just so that it's not exposed to those negative degrees out there in Fahrenheit, uh, but so that it still gets a little bit colder. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not going to freeze over just because that will kill the plant, but you just want to monitor things. And I think that's everything. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe for more videos on other carnivorous plant v videos that will come out here in the near future, uh, propagation and all that stuff. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit like for me and I will see y'all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.